Okay, another piece is the blood dance, as I call it, the blood dance. I, I think it's called the blood dance, the war dance or whatever. The crazy savages do this to get themselves up in a, in a instinctual stupor so that they can, can commit murder and violence and things like that. So essentially what they're doing is they're trying to they're trying to weaken inner voices of morality with this dance. And of course, primitive tribes did all these dances too. Not necessarily because they were trying to weaken any kind of moral humanity because that wasn't yet uh, written down or known. Um, but in this case, it is exactly that for these boys because they're losing that sense of humanity. Um, and so I've got a piece to read uh, about that on page 191. I also wondered whether the dance was to, this is another way to look at it. You can consider the dance was a way to prevent sanity loss from the kind of things they were doing. But did that really help? I don't think so. But that's another way of looking at it. This is near the end. This is page 191. Castle Rock is the chapter. So at this point in the book, this is like the last diplomatic measure. Um, and they're planning on going over there and they're, they're talking amongst each other. And Eric says this, he says, but they'll be painted. This is Jack. This will be Jack and the savages will be painted. But they'll be painted. You know how it is. The others nodded. They understood only too well the liberation into savagery that the concealing paint brought. Well, we won't be painted, said it, Ralph, because we aren't savages. So this is, could be considered another way of dealing with savagery, is painting, trying to make yourself different than, the, than Ralph and the troop. I don't know if it's only a way of separating from Ralph. You could ask the question, if Jack, if Ralph in that group didn't exist, it was just Jack and his buddies, and they devolved into savagery, would they still paint each other? Do they only paint each other to differenti differentiate themselves from Ralph's group? That may be the case, differentiation. But certainly it is the, it is, um, they're gone into savagery. Okay, so now on the Lord of the Flies specifically. So, um, the Lord of the Flies is actually this cover. It is a pig head. So they, they hunt pigs, the Jack and them hunt pigs. And um, eventually in the book, they some of the little kids speak of this beast that they're afraid of, and they don't know whether it exists or not, and it scares people. And so what they do is they take their first pig kill, they, they cut the head off, they put it on a stick, and they put it up on the top of the mountain as a gift to the beast. And the Lord of the Flies is the pig head. And one of the boys, who is more insane than all the rest of them, he hears voices and stuff, Simon, he actually hears the Lord of the, of the Flies speaks to Simon a few times. And I didn't know what Lord of the Flies meant. I couldn't think of what would be Lord of Flies, what would command the flies. Because I was thinking Lord of the Flies was, was rot. The pig head represented rot, decay of humanity. And but it doesn't fit with the Lord of the Flies. That would flies would like decay, but it wouldn't be Lord over them. So I didn't it didn't make sense to me. So I looked up Lord of the Flies on the Wikipedia. Apparently Lord of the Flies is a direct translation of some demon from mythology. So I don't know then if it fits very well. I don't know if Golding fit it very well with the pig head. It, you can't take it literally, Lord of the Flies. It is just some demon. So you could look at it then. If you take, rather than taking Lord of the Flies as the metaphor to kind of interpret, just take demon to interpret. You could say that the pig head does represent decay of humanity, just as hell and demons represent trying to make people immoral and corrupt them. I think that's probably, well, that's one way to interpret it. But I don't think you can interpret Lord of the Flies literally. There's no Lord over the flies in the book to, that I can find. Um, what else? And so also about the beast. 
you could think of the beast as representing fear. And of course, fear would also reduce sanity and help with the decay. Why then is this pig yet a gift to the beast? Was really this gift a way of dealing with the beast? Maybe. Um, but if the if the pig head is just rot and decay, then I don't know how that deals with fear. So I don't know. You'd have to think about that. Um, there is a piece, though, 158, page 158. This is near the end of Gift for the Darkness chapter. So he says, this is in the pig head, says to Simon, there isn't anyone to help you, only me, and I'm the beast. So that's that's why I thought the pig head was just to represent, it's at the top of the mountain also, representing just the island is decaying their humanity. It's rot and decay, just like the pig head is rotting, its flesh is falling off and flies are attacking it, and you can start to see its bones later on, and all that's just supposed to be rot and decay. And also, I thought it was significant because Golding in this book, remember that fiction, everything is a good artwork like a novel. Everything is chosen. Nothing is random. So Golding picked a pig for a reason. He could have had them hunting squirrels. He could have had them hunting, I don't know, wild dogs or something like that, beavers on the island, whatever. So also strange. Isn't it a tropical island? Yeah, there's pigs. I don't know if that really fits. Um, but anyways, I think he picked pig because pig is actually very human-like. And I don't mean metaphorically like people are pigs. But I mean in terms of the physiology, in terms of pink skin, um, a lot of pink blood. Pink blood is similar. Pink organs are similar to humans. Pink skin. Um, I know that you can use pigs as dial dialysis. Pig organs are sometimes used in transplants. So pig is very human-like. And so you could think of, actually, you could maybe, I don't know if you could take it this far, but you could say that when they began to hunt pigs, you, it was the beginning of them hunting people, in which they eventually did at the end, right? They were hunting Ralph. So hunting pigs was just the beginning. That's like hunting semi-humans. Eventually they're going to be hunting humans. What an interesting question would be is what they would have done with Ralph if they caught him. What they would have done with him. Would they have ate him? I don't know. But anyways, I thought that was, you could think of maybe the pig as a transition. It's definitely purposeful to pick a pig because they could have hunted squirrels. You could have had no pigs on, on the island, just squirrels. It's even odd that pigs would be on such a small island, evolutionary speaking. That would be weird. So that's definitely a, a, some fantasy. And, but, he's, but the purpose is to show what I've just said about pig as being human-like. Okay, the last piece I want to talk about is the rescue. So, eventually they are rescued based on a mistake, really, which is kind of odd. Uh, while they're hunting Ralph, they actually burn down more of the forest, and I guess a naval boat finds them because of that. And one, a couple things about the, the rescue. So, right at the beginning, you notice that the the guy the one guy gets off the boat and he's standing there and then I don't know how long he's standing there but eventually Ralph runs up to the beach because he's being chased and the officer has his hand on his gun and eventually he says he says to I just I'll just read it I've got it here this is on page two twenty two this is the last just a couple pages of the book it says should the office the officer looked at Ralph doubtfully for a moment then took his hand away from the butt of the revolver. Hello. Squirming a little conscious of his filthy appearance, Ralph answered shyly, Hello. The officer nodded as if a question had been answered. So what was the question? The question was whether these are savage aboriginal tribes and, and kids. Obviously the guy knew they were kids, but he didn't know who these people were. Maybe they were just aboriginals of the island didn't speak any any English, and would have been, I don't know how they would have dealt with them, right? Um, but because he could acknowledge language and English in the boy, he then could, he then wasn't worried that they were mindless savages, right? 
So that was the question that was answered. There is humanity left, so they can be rescued. That's the, that's the big point. And then one more piece of that from 225, which is the last page of the book. It says here, so this is after they're all stopped. And I guess I should mention this quickly first, though. Another important part of this is the naval officer, and I think, I don't know if this is just common or if this is intended, or maybe a bit of both. The naval officer is dressed in white with gold buttons down his shirt. I think that's another important part because I think he is supposed to be, I think he's supposed to resemble the shell, the conch shell. Notice the conch shell was also white, unique, glistening, a piece of royalty. This is a naval officer. He commands the same thing. He is unique as an officer, I guess. He is white, white outfit. Um, he he is British naval, navy kind of royalty sort. Of, not royalty, but you know what I mean, like British navy. He also represents exactly what the shell did. He's the same thing. And so again, and you could, he's, he's an adult. So again, he, he, I bet you, you could say he's a more powerful shell, bigger shell. And so once all the kids saw this guy, they were stopped again. They, their savagery was perhaps stopped abruptly, not gone, not cured, but it was in their face and it stopped all their activities. And they essentially caved to the authority, regained authority on the island. So the last piece is on the last page I want to read. It says here, and in the middle of them, so this is the group of boys that had circled the Navy guy and they were all stopped and all that. In the middle of them with filthy body, mar matted hair, and unwiped nose, Ralph wept for the end of innocence, the darkness of man's heart, and the fall through the air of the true wise friend called Piggy. This is the last piece. This is an essay topic. And there's three of them there. Perfect for an essay, right? The end of innocence. What is that? You could think you could take the easy route and say, well, it's just a savagery. But I think it simply means that these boys will never be the same. It's the end of innocence, the end of their innocence. The end of their childhood was the island, you could say, I guess. The darkness of man's heart. I think that's supposed to mean that savagery and violence and all of that is in every person and can come out under certain environmental conditions and affects people differently depending on who they are why there's another question for you why did jack and his troop they were i think they were a little older than ralph and piggy maybe they were the same age let's say they're close to the same age why would Jack and his group, which were from some boarding school, probably wealthier than Piggy and Ralph, upper class kids, why were they the first to go? You would think they would have higher education, perhaps more authority in their lives. Why were they the first to go? Ralph and Piggy didn't go that far at all. Piggy probably the least affected. I don't think Piggy was at all affected by savagery. I think he was immune, it seems to me. Ralph was slowly declining, um, but Piggy was not affected whatsoever by the savagery on the island that I could see. Anyways, darkness of man's heart. It's in us all, can come out in, under different environmental conditions, but affects us all differently. And why is that? I'll leave that with you. The last part, the fall through the air of the true wise friend called Piggy. So, again, the tragedy of that. Notice Simon isn't mentioned here. Simon was beaten to death by the kids. Not mentioned here. Maybe this is because this is from Ralph's perspective, and Piggy was Ralph's. It's hard to say they were friends, because Ralph was mean to Piggy, too. There was some respect between each other. Some respect. Um, but I think Ralph, at the end, realized... That Piggy was what he was, what Piggy was trying to do this whole time, trying to save them all, keep the fire going and keep the meetings going, 
protect the car, protect the shell, all that stuff was all Piggy. And Ralph did a half-assed job compared to Piggy in that regard. But Piggy couldn't lead because Piggy wasn't respected by the kids because he was a social outcast. People made fun of him. Little kids made fun of him. Uh, Jack and his gang thought he was fat and didn't want to listen to him and blah, 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 right? Piggy couldn't lead, but he was the best advisor to a leader. Ralph was supposed to lead, not the best leader. Um, but he, well, anyways. Um, that's my thoughts for this book. Very good book. Worth reading and worth experiencing yourself, even though I've dissected some of the good stuff. Um, and also worth thinking about yourself. So please leave any comments of what you thought, anything I missed, you thought was interesting, any other interpretations, especially about Lord of the Flies. I don't think you can take it literally, but if you can and you have a good explanation for it, I'd like to hear it.